are glad welcome to our interesting show which promises to share stories of many inspiring speakers on board i am shavinder kaur and i am the brand ambassador of this powerful wonderful power packed uh, global talk show series uh, named as e4g talks which is an icc initiative and i am here to showcase the talent of our speakers she is a seasoned talent transformation consultant who is working across industries on people's capability enhancement creating a highly impactful business environment for more than two decades now please welcome our guest for today ms deepthi janyal hi how are you fine ma'am thank you so much for having me on the forum it's a real real pleasure to share the same platform with you so thank you so much for having me on sure so deepthi uh, before we start uh, the conversation i would like our uh, viewers to know about our speaker deepthi has conducted various programs and workshops across large corporate houses as well as educational institutes within india and in us ua indonesia malaysia singapore to name a few she has addressed the learning requirements across leadership levels in organizations through various interventions which are pragmatic and impactful being a great people's person she uses the strength of her beautifully by adopting interactive and engaging style of training workshops well deepthi this is wonderful well i uh, while i'm reading uh, you know about your um, profile i really feel uh, that you the way it's uh, your profile speak i'm sure that is how you uh, you know indulge in the uh, root level of training your uh, trainees you know that's a wonderful feeling um, deepthi is a diversity diversified experience working across large conglomerates as well as in mid sized companies manufacturing as well as service sector held her to leverage the best practices from each segment at the same time made her a holistic and lnd consultant she works extensively on psychometric assessments and tools to bring out the best in the incubants and the trainings what uh, interests her is she dabbles in fire walking uh, well that is so exciting and she uh, loves play uh, the jambe drum and is involved in philanthropic work as the president of women's wing working closely for the upliftment of transgender and sex workers interesting profile i must say deepthi thank you thank you very very much ma'am and yeah. just whilst you were saying that i just had to recall oh my god have i really done that so it's it's pretty uh, you know amazing that once you start doing things you might probably over the journey you might tend to forget ki aapne kya kya kiya hai and you know it humbles you it definitely satisfies you also so thank you so much uh, for having me on board with you ma'am great deepthi so uh, we are in conversation with deepthi and let's begin a conversation uh, my first obvious question to you is why is the training industry not given the right type of importance as compared to other uh, industries so if you have noticed that training has always for the longest time been considered as a secondary or supposed to be called as the ancillary industry the reason why it is not a prime sector industry is because training is something that is collaborated to employment or employability so technically when people come into a job the expectation is that they have to have the technical expertise they should be technically very very good nowhere is the particular uh, you know the 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 masking removed from that particular image that you need to be also holistically trained be it on soft skills which we now called as mandatory skills and in fact something called as behavioral skills that is called as intelligence beyond your intellect now when i say intelligence beyond your intellect what do i mean by saying that so erstwhile when people got their jobs they got their jobs based is their intelligence which was school and college driven just come look normally hum log intelligence intellectually bolte hain but slowly and steadily people started realizing to stay up into a particular level it's extremely crucial that one starts getting more emotionally attached to the emotions that the person exudes on the job off the job the relationships that you maintain and so on and so forth so communication change management leadership eq all of this became a like a mandatory skill now why is training not given the right importance is because people think that ignorance is always better 
training for the longest time if you have to ask me because this is my 24th year in the industry i can definitely say with absolute conviction is supposed to be called as an expensive uh, indulgence people think that training is only going to add to the cost so today if anything has to be chopped off the particular chart which is like a balance sheet to the organization the first thing that will be cut is training expenditure so people say kya zarurat hai chhod do kaam chalana hai finally it's going to be a repetitive job production ko badhao yaar training ko dafa karo maro goli the person will get on the job and so on and so forth so training for the longest time has been pushed literally on the back burner people do not even probably mentally put it into their you know thought process that training is like sharpening the saw you cannot use the same axe the same particular knife the same particular pair of scissors for your work how can you use the same particular mindset for years together continuously without being upgraded so we are not saying that you need enhancement every now and then but yes enhancement once in a while to holistic particular you know areas of learning is extremely crucial so why is it not given perfect importance is because it's not important it's a wasteful industry let's just put it on the back burner let's just do what we are doing every day so even the covid times these days the first thing that that struck off the balance sheet and throughout these particular one and a half year two years for that matter now we are coming to that i have not seen people coming forth and saying that deepthi training karani hi hai in fact now the expenses for the organizations have reduced yeah. but training abhi bhi wahan us level par nahi pahunche because of lack of awareness very aptly answered you know because uh, all of us we feel uh, i feel what exists the career which exists now may not even exist after 5 year very what, what will sustain and will re- remain is the skills you know so upskilling is very important and that is what will take you long way you know absolutely so uh, uh, that's how you know uh, most of the time training is given a back seat and uh, so we think ki yeah this is like a mandatory to nahi hai let's skip it or let's go ahead with but i feel personally companies who pay more attention in training part are definitely doing any day better than those who are uh, you know uh, keeping it as a back seat uh, agenda all right so um, while i was uh, reading your profile i i have also read couple of uh, many things you know which speaks about uh, women and other stuff so uh, why is the abuse to women uh, a topic of concern to you that's uh, like a personal cord i wouldn't have been uh, probably i would say interested or maybe wouldn't have even let it affect me probably it was always under the carpet because this is an issue which exists in dusre ke gharon mein had i not experienced it with my own sister who has got been through a very very troubled a very abused kind of a relationship for not just 1 2 3 years it goes into double digits like 25 years of a marriage and the abuse was so severe that he it has left us scarred both physically mentally and that scar is irreparable long long ago you know i was called on a couple of forums where i was doing a lot of sessions for women where their empowerment was concerned and their education was concerned education ranges from sex education to fight for your rights and everything under the sun so i was doing these workshops for children as small as maybe 10 years old to 15 in the teens to even for that matter adults and there was a particular time when i i had to ask them that you are getting skilled and you are being informed about those particular areas of your life which are by default existed be it your hygiene be it your care and so on and so forth what about your own family life now that's where i was facing the wall people were not ready to come forth they were not forthcoming openly kon bolna chahega ki mujhe koi maar raha hai koi peet raha hai i'm being sexually abused i'm being molested every night in the same house that i live in and most importantly it's not about the you know women who are only married every woman who is walking on the street there is no tag which she carries to kisi ko pata nahi chalega ki ye iska status kya hai so physical abuse be it to a woman who is not married who is married at whatever age for that matter it concerns me because we are at that particular brink of a particular world wherein we claim that there is liberalization to ye agar liberalization hai to kahan hai aur agar hai to dikhti kyu nahi hai and if it really exists why is that we still are so fond of putting everything under the carpet 
So the reason why I came out full throttle and I stepped up on the gas was only when I saw something so drastic that it affected my nephew, my niece, and their entire family just fell apart. You become, you just don't stand on your own feet. You do not trust your own self. You do not trust relationships and so on. And the point here is why? Why have you been enduring that particular abuse or the pain? So there might be multiple particular alibis. I would say justifications that a person can give. We are not talking about people who are orthodox, who are conservative. I'm talking about my sister who is a PhD apparently. What is the use of PhD? When values become your own obstacles. So that is one reason I had to be involved. I was forever involved. But I think now it's just that it has come with more of fears and uh, more of anger and vengeance. So true. You know, at times the uh, pain within can uh, help and, uh, you know, uh, others that what you're feeling, the pain, uh, you know, your sister has undergone a lot of pain, what you're saying. So you definitely didn't want it, you know, others to feel that way. So uh, it's, a, it's, I must say, it's, you really need a lot of courage to do that and uh, kudos for uh, you know bringing that enlightenment uh, for other ladies who are suffering in that kind of scenario so you are i just uh, heard that you know 24 long years it's a beautiful journey so what were the challenges that you faced you know and how have you managed uh, yourself i think my challenge in the, began in the year i started my career way back in the 90s i started my career when in the year 1997 as a management uh, facilitator so i have been teaching practically for 20 odd long years to be schools and management schools and every particular school that i've been to every particular institute and college that i went to i realized that there was more of attachment here because there was more openness to learn there was more willingness to learn People said, why do you see that there is a, you know, difference or there is a cult kind of a, you know, difference in the people in the corporates. So I said, corporates are already made to realize and to understand that we all know it. So what was my biggest challenge is that it's very ironic, you know, man, don't be surprised that I come with absolutely zero experience in the corporate. I've never done a job. So for 24 long years, so typically if I have to say, I've been jobless. So one thing that I'd like to do before I literally hang my boots or probably, you know, get to my tomb is that I'd like to do a job. So the biggest challenge was to prove my mettle in an industry which was per se, who is a trainer? A trainer is somebody who's done a job first, who's just packed her bags off and now wants to do something holistic and pass on the information and the learning. But with me, ma'am, it was a completely different thing. I started my career from there. And I said, I want to reach from the source point, from where you do your work. I will handhold you till you learn and you apply that. So the challenges were, Are ladki hai, bahut choti umar ki hai. How will she do it? I have done my life coaching. I am a transformational life coach by, you know, by profession. And whilst I was doing it, incidentally, I was shaking people's nerves because the coaches that I had who were probably double my age. I was reading people's brains. Uh, by the virtue of being a brain mapper. The first challenge came through is that, oh my God, pehla ladki hai, dusra bahut young hai, teesra experience industry ka nahi hai. How is she going to do it? So there was a massive challenge in proving my mettle. It took me enormous amount of hard work. Uh, lots of people had to speak for me. There were lots of transcripts that had to be created. People who went through the sessions, they recommended me. So there was a lot of word of mouth. But I'm sure you would understand this. It could not have been done in a jiffy. Because when, you know, I have friends who are from the corporates. So they say, oh, you have a rollicking life. I said, come, swap it one day and you'll find out <laughs> that, you know, your is always greener on the other side. Absolutely. So they say, oh, you are your own boss. I said, you know, when I enter a room of a training, I have multiple bosses who are sitting there who are going to judge me. They're going to frisk me. They're going to literally expect me to perform so that I'm called back the next day. So the challenges are innumerable every day. Though the biggest challenge that I faced, and I still sometimes am questioned, I didn't have a godfather in the industry. I didn't have anybody to tell me, Deepti, you're not taking the right path. So I literally walked on every path, like the fire walking that I do. I burnt my feet. I, I was absolutely a failure in so many things that I took up. 
and I, I, I put it up there thinking that it was supposed to be done. I took those very extreme drastic steps, which I'm very glad I took because that made me more experienced. I think it polished me and uh, it just polished those rough edges. And I still shudder from the very thought of delivering a session even today because I don't know how people will accept it. So the challenges are off the job in the past that I'm talking and dealing about. And of course, the future, which is very uncertain for the training industry, unless it does not, not get the position that it has to. Yes, uh, uh, I like what you said, you know, that you didn't have any godfather and and but you did exceptionally very good. That means that you had the zeal and the enthusiasm. And that's, uh, uh, you know, I must say a true Fauji kid, uh, I can say, Josh, uh, that Fauji brat, uh, Josh, that you have, that's a very good feeling to know that, ki, you know, karna hai, kar ke rahenge. it's really nice. And uh, so my, obviously, my next question was, uh, you know, what made you to take up training? Anything that you want to add in that? As, uh, in it just fell into my lap. I was just spotted by some particular, uh, you know, ma managing director of an organization whilst I was conducting a session. I so vividly remember in the Institute of Chartered Financial Analysts of India, I was used to deliver sessions there every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I did not notice that this lady who was supposed to be the chairperson and the director of an organization, she used to come outside as a guest speaker to some other class and just to stand outside my classroom and, you know, watch me perform, write a literary perform because she said, you're a performer. And I didn't know that about me. So I used to back the main, main class gate and every student used to say, ma'am, there is a lady who comes here every day, every time that you come, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday at seven o'clock, she watches you. So I said, okay, hoga koi moderator wagara because they used to be on the prowl. Suddenly, one fine day, this lady comes to me and she said, uh, I'd like you to come down to my office. I said, and why would you, why would I do that? She said, because I really like you. Just come and see me and I'll tell you what I do. I don't know why I took that plunge. And then I would say there was no looking back. And I'm really, really grateful, uh, you know, to Dr. Rajesh Arora and uh, Dr. Shalini Arora who believed so much that they gave me my first stint, literally, in training. And I can't forget that the hospitality industry, that is Sahara Star Hospitality is then, which was supposed to be the, the father of the hospitality because of uh, Subrato Royji. They gave me an opportunity there and I didn't even realize when I started training. And uh, then there was, of course, there was no looking back. And uh, that's it. So the journey has definitely started with a great mentor that you absolutely you know. I would say so, they were more of people who believed in the unseen. I had never done anything except for that. I had a very strong academic background. I was doing a lot of sessions for the academia and the corporate was very limited, but they, I think, just wanted to take the leap. And then they said, we, when we look at you, we find that there is a turban wearing Sardar who is playing a dhol. And I said, why would you envisage me like that? They said, because we see that spunk in you. So use that spunk on the training room. I still remember that and it makes me smile because, you know, you have those particular very weird kind of tags attached to your life and it stays with you. So, yeah. So uh, the journey has uh, definitely been very beautiful. And I'm sure you have uh, and uh, you are continuing to impact that kind of change in others' life. Uh, and actually, you know, what we think, what we want to do, if we are able to even turn, you know, convert somebody's life for a beautiful transformation, that's a different uh, feeling altogether. So coming up, uh, uh, you are a beautiful young lady, you know. And, Not young, man. <laughs> pretty old. Yeah, yeah but uh, uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, Age is just a number, If that, then I can say that. That's so uh, are you religious or spiritual? Do you believe in that? Religious, yes, to a certain extent, because I follow the customs that my mother and my father left me with. I am just hoping that wherever they are today, uh, they would be seeing, okay, she just does follow whatever was taught to her in terms of, you know, the traditions and the festivals and the puja and all that stuff. But if you ask me heart in heart, I am extremely spiritual. I'd like to believe in the doing rather than just the saying. And that's an adage that I, you know, I swear by. I have met scores of people in my life, ma'am, who have always promised to do, but they have not delivered. 
So where spirituality is concerned, it's in the doing. So they say, do not speak lies. Okay, we, we, we know this. This was taught to us in moral science. But in children, so it's in, it's in the doing that you are doing. So spirituality for me is be the darga, be the gurdwara, be the church. It does not matter where I sit and where I pray. What matters to me, and for that matter, for the longest time in the couple of years, even now for that matter, I would like to believe that being connected to people and doing something for them is spirituality to me. So it's as simplistic as that. So there is no there is no big theory attached. There is nothing attached to it. It's just that do what you can do for others to make their lives a little more different. That's really nice to know, you know, because uh, uh, at times uh, for uh, uh, the generation, they feel like, you know, spiritual and religious, being religious is a very uh, old fashioned or outdated. So uh, sticking to our roots, and the traditional values definitely plays very important role in our own, uh, you know, shanti. I can say man ki shanti, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, uh, is being unmarried uh, ever been a stigma to your life? You know, I'm asking a very personal question. I, 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 you don't tell me that, ma'am. I'm enjoying my life to the hills. You know. <laughs> Well, as you first mentioned that the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. So people who have been married and who've told me about their marriages, they always say, Deepthi, you are in the best place that you are. Yes, please. Decided. Perfect. <laughs> and people who are probably unmarried and who would like to be married, they say, Ek bar to banta hai. I say, ye, ye koi cuisine thodi hai ki kisi restaurant mein jao, try kar lo, or chhod do agar pasand nahi aaya. I said, marriage is a long-term kind of a commitment. And it, I, 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 for the, again, I did not come with this thought process when I was in my early 20s and when my parents did start looking for me like a normal setup would, um, I was completely ready. I wanted to be married. I wanted to be husband, I wanted to be a I wanted to do everything under the sun that any normal girl of my age would have thought so. I envisage that also for that matter. What is very interesting is after a little while, when my mom got detected with cancer and she passed away, when my dad suddenly passed away, I suddenly realized and you know told myself, what is that one thing in your life that you have decided for yourself and it has happened the same way? It's steered as per nature. That's what destiny does to you. So you do decide, but he is going to be the one, whoever he is, wherever he, she, whatever the God form is, they are going to tell you what to do. Has it been a stigma to be unmarried? Uh, the answer is yes, absolutely a big yes. Knowing the fact that you know you are a girl who is out there in the world, who is training, who is uh, visiting different cities, countries for that matter. Now people say, oh, she is not married because she has got this kind of a lifestyle. Oh, she is not married because she has this kind of a lifestyle. Oh, she enjoys her lifestyle so much that it's better she does not get married. Finally, aisi ke to ghar baste hi hai. will she be able to khana banana aata hai, ghar ki, and so on and so forth. So it's very interesting to have heard all this, walked that entire path, proven people wrong. So when I do things which are like absolutely jaw dropping, so they said, Achha, achha, to normal hi hai. So I have not taken a decision to not be married. It so happened and I have not battled that. And it is absolutely, as I said, it's destined. It is supposed to happen when it is supposed to. I have kept absolutely doors open. As you said, I'm a young girl. So I am still keeping the doors open. <laughs> yeah, so, sure. And all the very best. And I thank hope you. To, yeah, yeah, that's really nice. So, uh, you know, uh, what do you uh, uh, envisage as a woman in your work area after a few years? You know? What do I envisage her doing? Um, yes. Well, it's a very, very kind of, a, it's a very thick kind of a profile that I'm doing right now into psychometrics, into behavioral sciences, into psychology, uh, working onto people's minds, brains, everything for that matter. I'd like to encapsulate all of that put together. At least two to three years down the line, I wouldn't like to do isolated, you know, run of the mill kind of workshops. I'd like to create something which is very robust, a kind of a, you know, meal. It's like a complete plate which has got a solution to problems. People say that I can be a good listener. I have been into counseling, coaching, and for that matter, emotional intelligence, which I do very, very rampantly. 
when you are doing all of these things with people across the you know uh, across the i would not say globe for that matter not reach that so far but in that fraternity that you are doing when people can reach out to you with conviction and with their faith and confidence i would like to create the solutions wherein people see and get it immediately even off the rack for that matter it should not be like a paracetamol but definitely reaching out for solutions should become very easy so where do i see that in a few years down the line i'd like to you know come up with that particular solution providence methodology that people know that agar problem hai to deepthi ke paas chalte hain yahan pe definitely koi na koi solution zarur milega yes you know then people know the address ki deepthi will be the solving uh, uh, problem uh, person very nice and uh, so deepthi when uh, you're not working so what are you doing do you have many friends uh, what is that what is your routine like Ah, you know the it's it's quite interesting, and people would find this very strange too. That somebody as gregarious as me, who is on the platform where you need to have a face-to-face -face kind of with multiple different people across the globe, every day you're meeting every you new people. So, first of all, she's a she's going to be a very social person. And here the catch is that for the longest time in my life, I believe that everyone you meet is a friend, which is not true. So to be a real friend, there are only three things that you have to do. Number one, eat together, pray together, travel and sleep together. Now, when I say sleep together, people will start running their mind wildly into imagination. What imagination is mean, running wild. <laughs> absolutely. So when I say that, I just mean to say spend time and live together to understand idiosyncrasies, to understand peculiarities. to accept to acknowledge to familiarize with the dissimilarities and to adopt the person varna aate jaate ab har waqt dost nahi bana sakte you meet people you attach your ideologies with them they become very thick with you they could be acquaintances let them thrive let them breed with you let that particular relationship see the ups and downs and the turmoils so the part of the question that you asked was do i have many friends to answer to that is no Incidentally, the age that I am in, I won't mention it. You know it, so we'll keep that as a secret. So, I incidentally have a very small Christmas list map. The Christmas list has shortened over the number of years after the trials and tribulations. After I've seen people that you know, whatever I went through in my life, who was there, literally, holding me, there cushioning me, or who had my back? and those particular people i never had to ask them to do that for me they were simply there jin se ummeed bahut zyada laga rakhi thi i saw wo tum kahi par shadow mein bhi kahi par nahi the so automatically it became more of a statement which i said i believe by the adage i do not believe in the saying i believe in the doing i'd like to believe that that as a friend that i expect that i'm sure people expect that from me too and i'd like to leave that as a lineage beautiful like you know you aptly describe what friendship should be it is uh, you know it should be meaningful and not with a selfish motive behind so in that case jitne bhi aapke friend hai har friend zaruri hota hai you know bilkul 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 yeah so deepthi it's wonderful talking to you i would love to continue the conversation and we have come uh, into the to the end of our conversation segment uh, you are from the training industry so i definitely want my viewers to listen what are the three important takeaways or tips that you would like to share uh, for the people in the training industry you know? sure So the first tip, particularly for the training for the people in the training fraternity or people who like to come into the training fraternity, is number one: be unique. Be your own self. When I say unique, your own self means do not cut copy paste data, do not cut copy paste training styles. There is a lot of content which is available on the you know on the internet, but picking that up and sticking it around in a training is not going to help because that is easily available. number 2 keep learning extremely important to keep sharpening the saw because everything changes and change is imperative and that is the only particular thing that is going to survive so if you believe that you know it all you will be surprised rather the shock that there is somebody who knows more than you last but not the least there is no particular zone area or company or particular fraternity that you should not take up in the training because each and every particular area that you put your hand in there is something that you're going to take for 
For example, people would say, I'd start with a blue chip company. No, I have started from rock bottom. I've been to places like Malegaon and Jalgaon and Amravati, where people would not even want to go through because I belong to this state called Maharashtra, been brought and brought up here. I've traveled to interior parts of the north, interior parts of the east, as well as even to the south for that matter. And people say, hey, you know what? You should always say that you want metro cities. My sheer earnest advice suggestion would be do not choose your locations. Approach people with the entire mindset that there is going to be a learning everywhere. And having said that, it is going to be amazing to see that the city that you develop on the basis of your knowledge and learning interactions is going to be very, very robust. That's so nice. Your strong values, your SOPs for that matter that you have laid for yourself for a training. I'm sure uh, it's definitely has added value, uh, you know, to the training um, uh, module that you uh, deliver. And uh, thank you so much, Deepthi. Um, she makes a day brighter. She leaves a little sparkle wherever she goes. Well, that was uh, Miss Deepthi for us today on our show. Thank you so, thank you. so very much, ma'am. Thank you once again for being a part of this uh, women's special series, Choose to Challenge. And you are absolutely a great example to choose to challenge, you know. Karna hai, karke dikhaya hai, very nice. And um, we wish you uh, all the very best for all your future thank endeavors. Thank you so, so very much, ma'am, once again for having me on the platform. And I must say that there is absolutely so much of learning everywhere for that matter. I've learned a lot of things from you, of course, which is not on the recording and that's going to be yeah. off the recording itself. So thank you once again for that charming uh, session that I had with you. And good luck to you too, ma'am, for whatever sessions that you do with E4G Talks. And the prime motive of being here is that that little emblem, which is so close to my heart, it is absolutely a moment of pride to be here. Thank you. Great, Deepthi. We are absolutely honored equally, you know. So we wish you uh, all the very best, as I've already Thank mentioned. You. And uh, uh, anybody who wish to share their inspiring stories, please contact at uh, shaviefogitalks.com. I thank all our viewers. Please like, share, subscribe to our channel, E4G Talks. And do not forget to put your reviews in the comment section. Today's episode was definitely one uh, of its kind. And stay tuned for more interesting stories. Thank you. Stay safe. Jai Hind. E4G Talks is brought to you by ISECI, Indian Ex-Defense Service Employees Chamber of Commerce and Industries. Thanks to its vast veteran network and global and pan-India associates, ISECI can carry out various commerce facilitations and CSR projects across India and the world. Some of ISECI's core capability areas are Skill India, Atmanirbhar Bharat, Digital India, any ex-servicemen welfare or job program, Swachha Bharat Abhiyan related projects, telemedicine and healthcare training and job scheme, save water scheme, defense industry SME, MSME cluster and hub development, maritime training and inland water training with job facilitation, Canada study job and permanent residency opportunity, e-commerce, Andaman and Nicobar commerce opportunities. ISECI's global reach includes countries like Indonesia, Slovakia, Canada, Nepal, Singapore, Rwanda, USA, UK. Above all, it is ISECI's effort to create a veterans brand made by the veterans, for the veterans and made up of the veterans. Every Indian's support is invaluable in this journey. ISECI is a registered society for ex-servicemen's welfare and envisions that every veteran should be a part of India's economic growth story. It is the aim of ISECI to create an enabling commerce platform that will empower and synergize the veteran's talent pool. This is possible only with the support of entrepreneurs, businesses and consultants from civil society. 
all proceeds if any are utilized for the welfare of ex servicemen and for public charity